what is this? It's gonna be good or bad? Daniel's face isn't sure. <laughs> Let's kick it. Ice, ice, baby. Ice, ice, baby. Hi there guys, I am with Daniel. We spoke to Daniel from Warm Showers. So Daniel has kindly taken me around Durango this morning. We're currently at La Ferreria. La Ferreria. So behind me is an old iron workshop. And Daniel has just walked me through the route to avoid some more danger. So my original route was gonna be the black line here, a more direct route through Zacatecas and Aguas Calientes. Due to some of the troubles in Zacatecas, Daniel gave me a route which would be able to navigate through there without hitting any trouble. Sorry, mum. I didn't tell my mum uh, about uh, the dangers uh, in Sinaloa. Well, yeah. your son now is heading to a hot spring, so he's <laughs> yeah. really dangerous over there. we there. go. Should we go get some food? Yes. Beautiful. What do you want to eat? In the market? No, yeah. You might not be able to hear me. We're in Mercado Juarez. We're about to have some food. And what is this? Look at that. La Crab, which is a local dish to Durango. We got some beans and rice on the side. <laughs> There's a guy singing behind me. So he's not gonna. He's not gonna stop. Not gonna stop until someone pays him. We're gonna load up beans for the base. And there we go. A bit of tomato. We'll get some more crunchy things in there. Some onions as well, and we'll get a bit of lime. It's gonna be good or bad. Daniel's face isn't sure. <laughs> not the best. No. <laughs> this is the the flavor is really intense because it's like a shrimp. But yeah, in the air. I feel bad. I really wanted to enjoy it. It's another flavor you are not used to. Yeah, no. It's a no. <laughs> a no from me. I'm gonna leave that. For me to leave food is a big. <laughs> I never leave food. The scorpion taco. We don't need to try that again. Daniel has very kindly driven me to the outskirts of the city. Now we say goodbye, my friend. It's lovely to meet you. Hopefully, Daniel's gonna come and visit me in the UK, and we'll do a bike tour around the UK. Thank you very much. See you soon. Yeah, see you soon. On our way to the hot springs, see what Daniel comes up with. I'm looking forward to getting in some hot water. Let's do it. Good morning. Slightly sore head today. Arrived here into Rio Grande last night. A friend of mine, also on the road called Joanna, put me in touch with a guy named Josh who owns a bike shop here with his dad. They hosted me and they were absolutely amazing hosts. They have a beautiful garden, absolutely beautiful with loads of different animals, loads of birds. Had dinner together, they invited all their friends over. I maybe understood 5% of what was being said, but there was a lot of jokes, a lot of laughs. More drinks were consumed throughout the night. Woke up this morning, Josh has brought me into town. You wanna to say hello to the camera? This is Josh, this has been my Hola. host. <laughs> Saludos desde México. The hospitality is, is awesome and I thought it would get more difficult with the language barrier and it has. In terms of connections, it's a lot harder for me to convey gratitude and make jokes, but the Mexican way of just inviting you into the family and just drink, eat, enjoy. They're not deterred by the fact that I can't speak much, that I'm trying, just absolutely amazing, really, really really happy. As I left Rio Grande, I started to head into the desert area surrounding Zacatecas and towards Guanajuato. My mood started to change. I had some unfortunate events. My tent was ruined by some cats at a camp spot. I was having brief encounters with people along the road, but was frustrated with my own language skills that I couldn't connect and communicate with them. So I'm with these little boys. They wanted to be in the YouTube video. Say hello. <laughs> You'll be in the video. I don't think they understand. We've been trying to talk Spanish to each other, but we don't understand. Adios. The desert then started to beat me up. There wasn't much to look at, but I, I dealt with that before on my trip. There was something else, something in the air. The friendliness from locals had understandably dropped off as I entered an area which had a lot of tension. Smiles and waves were hard to come by and I found myself feeling quite lonely. To 
make things worse, I couldn't wild camp due to the dangers with the cartel, so I was purely planning my days around places which had hotels that I could stay in. I would often find myself in these small towns with nothing to do in a hotel room, completely alone. My mood changed and I was very homesick. I found myself searching for a social oasis within this desert, some human interaction, which I finally found in Pinos. I mean, a place called Pinos was hosted by my friend's friends from Rio Grande, which was absolutely awesome. Went out for dinner, had a nice dinner, a big hot chocolate, chaparando, which was just the thickest hot chocolate made from mace. And now it's time for a big day. I'm really looking forward to getting to Guanajuato, staying in a hostel, hopefully meeting some other people. But it does mean we go big day. <laughs> but it does mean a big day today 175 kilometers that's why we're up so early i locked myself upstairs in the house i was staying in so i'm half an hour late already cold very cold from the top of this climb dog was being mental at me didn't look where i was going so i was trying to avoid the dog and then got a puncture so let's fix it <laughs> done 17 and a half minutes pain in the ass <laughs> right time to finish off this bloody mountain get into Guanajuato, get some food, have a shower, nice sleep. Look at that, grubby. to Guanajuato last night, came into a city which I was not expecting to be absolutely buzzing. People everywhere, my senses were in absolute overload. Genuinely took a bit of a toll. I am now in a bit of a reset mode. All my clothes being washed, I need to repair my tent for the cat battle. But Guanajuato has a few different foods which I'm here to try. This is called guacamaya. It's an absolute beast of a sandwich. Bread they use is delicious and then of course, all the accoutrements which I get to put in. You know, try and film me eating this. It might be a while before I get down to the actual sandwich. Stuffed with chicharrones first, inside the torta, the bread, then a layer of pork meat over the top, salsa, avocado on the top, and lime juice spread over the whole thing. It's absolutely delicious. I'm trying to unload some of it so that I can make it into what resembles a sandwich. I don't know whether that's possible. Really tasty. Absolutely huge. Mm. So the Inglaterra. Sí. No, um, estoy andiamo mi PC. Empecé en Alaska. Estoy andiamo a Argentina. Sí. ¿De dónde eres? Ah, Salamanca. Sí, sí. Mm. <laughs> I absolutely loved Guanajuato. It took me a minute to adjust to a city after the seven days out there in the desert, but once I had, I fell in love. The culture of the city was incredible and the layout reminded me more of a rural Italian town than a Mexican city. The food was beautiful, the buildings were gorgeous, and the fact you could stumble into a parade randomly just blew my mind. The Callejoneadas would also walk the streets at night with large crowds singing. After the bleak and arid desert landscape, I had finally found my oasis. Thank you for watching and as always, please like and subscribe. Join me next time where I cycle from Guanajuato to Nevado de Toluca. As I climb up to the highest altitude that I've ever been, I will witness the migration of the monarch butterflies, as well as tackling some of the toughest gradients and roads that I've had on the trip so far. I'll see you there.